Hello and welcome back. Okay, in the last audio video, I put in some changes to the circuit to make it more convenient to add additional channels and make this circuit polyphonic. Now I think that's the big change I need now to bring the musical capability of this system to the next level. So let's go ahead and add that second channel. Now when I reorganized this, I did try to make it sensible for adding two more channels. This breadboard contains the common components. These two represent the first channel. And I should basically be replicating this up here to create the second channel. Right, so firstly, we need the four latches. These are the load lines cross-connected. I need to connect the outputs from the right hand pair to the inputs of the left hand pair. I need those LED outputs. Okay, should be able to give that a little bit of a test now. Need to cross connect the latches at either end here. I will not be sorry to see the last of the yellow go boards when I've used them all. And I've got to cross connect the signals up the top here as well. Well, that's not right, is it? Now this set has stopped working. How have I broken those? Okay, now that's working the way I would expect, but I'm suspicious of it now. done wrong up here. All of these are misaligned by one. It means this pin up here is going straight in the, into power. I don't understand why this circuit is started being unstable when I haven't changed it. Oh, hang on, this is missing the button that's supposed to put it into a cert mode. So we've just got a couple of these which are hopefully just dodgy wires. So there it's on, and there it's not. I think we've got the Elgo boards being a bit dodgy again by the looks of it. Two bits high, clock it. Next two bits, next two, and then the top two. And then the other signal to copy them over. That is correct. 
Right, so now I've got to reproduce the audio section of the circuit up here. Okay, hopefully this bit will be slightly less eventful. Four of these 74LS193 chips. Also one of these 74LS86 chips. It's four exclusive OR gates. These are the counters. Borrow going to the countdown. So these are the three which I use to take the register data. This one is the borrow out going to the count up. It's our final divide by 16. And for the three main counters we need to pull the clear line down. This one we don't because we're using that for silencing the circuit. Whereas on this one we do want to pull parallel load high. I think the internal pull-ups would do that anyway, but let's not take the risk. Whereas on these we want to cross-connect parallel load lines. Parallel load there comes from the set output on the set reset latch. Reset line there, well, that needs to come from the output of the four input AND gate there. Let's keep that out of our way for now. Right, so we need to reproduce the same configuration of just going from the data lines out to the counter chips. I completely messed this up last time. Undo it all and do it again. Do remember the least significant bit is there. Messed that up already. Okay, so when this completes a count step, that's when we're resetting and that's when we need the set reset latch. So the countdown over there needs to be driven direct from there. We did pull all the counters we're not using high. So these are the count ups. Once again, I don't think this is strictly necessary, but it is good practice. On this one, we're counting in the opposite direction, so it's the count down we want to pull high. All of these chips need ground lines. Okay, so now we need the volume inputs into this exclusive OR gate. That's the cross connections of all the second inputs. And then the first inputs need to come directly from the four volume lines. Okay, so then these same four lines need to come down to these four inputs to the AND gate. This is just used to freeze the circuit so I don't generate a tone when I don't want to. I'm just taking them to this side so I don't... I'm trying to avoid getting in the way of the LEDs. Then obviously the output of that four input AND goes to the reset line of this counter. So when all four bits are high of the volume, the output of here is high. That raises the reset line. That stops the circuit from counting. All right, I think we've done everything to make it count now. So now we need the output circuit, which means we need to build the resistor ladder. I do apologize that there's next to no rhyme or reason of my colors now because I'm running really low on these interconnects. I think it was Big Clive I saw had a little machine for holding the legs on resistors and trimming them. Getting quite jealous of that. It's easy to forget how much easier surface mount made some of the manufacturing. Now I used a 1.2k here as the pull up to, but here I'm going to use a 5.1k threw some numbers into a spreadsheet and determined this was a lot better. I'm going to replace this one at the same time. Okay, now in theory, that's all there. Apart from we haven't done anything with the output yet. 
Okay, I'm going to build an alternate voltage divider. Right, so if I've done this right, that can go there. And that is where the signal goes. Now, the big question is, how do I merge signals? I think I'll get a reasonable response by just connecting the wires up. Now, I've got more work I want to do on the output before I send it to the speaker, but I think this should give me a functioning output. How do I test this? I'd like to test as much as I can before I go and take it back to a CPU and start generating code. And that should be generating a tone from both halves. Right. So that's coming purely from this new circuit. Note from the old circuit. That's coming from the new one. And that's what I get if I merge them, which is slightly quieter. It's interesting, but of course we would expect strange harmonics if we try and got, get exactly the same tone coming out of two circuits. What we want is a different tone. So let's clock that twice, then once more for high. But I'm just going to set some lower bits there. That is very promising. Right, I think I'm going to be bold and try and plug this directly into the CPU now. Okay, so here's the block of data we currently play back for one channel music. Playback logic is very simple. Load the two bytes in and output them. What we need is some different data that supports two channels. So here's the playback logic at the moment. We call this select note function Right, so this is pretty dirty. If I had more than two notes to find, I'd probably write a system with a sorted list of the notes currently on. There's never gonna be very many, three or four at most, I reckon, but this route is probably the by far the quickest one to write. Okay, now this looks reasonable, but I don't like that. We've got one note getting louder and one getting quieter, and so they swap position. Same there. In fact, this happens quite a lot. Let's get rid of that. So here I'm just looking for the case where a note in one position matches one in the other position. If that is the case, I'll just swap. Ah, rather than appearing in the first position, this first new note gets swapped because that minus one matches that one. Okay. This really should be turned into a function. Now we basically need to do that twice. But before I did faff around with loading both bytes in and now putting them with a simple move just to minimize the time between the data changes, and I don't actually need to do that. That is going to put them out in the opposite order though. Let's turn this into a function. I don't know why these MIDI files sometimes have chunks of silence at the start. It's easier if we just remove those. Have to be careful that we're only removing a multiple of four bytes though. And we do need the four bytes of silence at the end, or it will keep playing the final tone. 
Right, let's give it a go. Okay. That was absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased with that. In fact, I think this audio circuit is pretty close to done now. I have got a few little things I'd like to do on the final output, and then I've got to convert it to a PCB. Now, when I do that, I do have a final decision to make. The individual channels is basically this section that has been replicated twice to give us two channels. When I convert it to PCBs, it wouldn't be that difficult to increase that count. Nothing else needs to change because of the way we've daisy chained the latches. So I could easily move this on to like four channels just by doubling the circuit up. Should I do that? I don't know. Maybe I have to see how big the PCB would be once I've done the layout. Give your thoughts in the comments and I will hopefully see you again very soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, one last thing. It's very close to Christmas now and I'm thinking of doing a quick video to demonstrate this with a couple of Christmas songs as a preview. So um, there should be a link there.